July 16, 2023. Ukraine war, approximately nine years and six months into the invasion of Crimea. Day 508 of Special Putin's operations. Big picture. The Kremlin is attempting to restart assaults across the contact lines in nearly every sector. Ukraine's female military members have finally properly received locally produced summer uniforms which are designed specifically for the female form, just in time to also need fall and winter uniforms. Ukraine is currently launching one-third, the tactical daily airstrikes, that Russia is launching. Russian electronic countermeasures are proving effective to restrain Ukrainian light drone use, limiting tactical options for Ukraine where these systems operate. Russian threats to use cluster munitions are moot as they've been using these since the start of the invasion. Oryx is reporting that up to the most recent update, Russia has lost 11,146 military vehicles, including 2,840 captured, 1,343 tanks destroyed, with another 545 tanks captured. Nipa line. Moscow's mouthpieces are bragging over the claimed destruction of a sector UAV hub and apparently attempting to mock Elon Musk's Starlink for being destroyed in the attack. Water shortages continue to be solved by expensive delivery in many areas. Moscow has mildly increased their shelling to a total of 415 explosions in this arblast by adding grad systems as well as by attacking civilian targets with automatic grenade launchers. Zaporizhia Front. Heavy fighting. Reports of the Kremlin ordering attacks to restart were at least proven mildly correct as in a few places Kremlin advances have been recorded by Ukraine. Fighting here is heavy as both armies are now attacking in near proximity and both are making gains. Ukraine struck a central command post deep along this front with casualties and details of the strike target yet unknown. At the city of Staromayskoy on the Morky Alley, Kremlin mouthpieces are reporting that Ukraine made a long-distance advance into the city, only to be repulsed shortly afterwards. East Front, Donetsk. Heavy shelling in this arblast on every point of the line, suggesting perhaps Ukraine has been unable or unwilling to strike storage or to successfully break supply lines. Marienka and Avdiivka continue to be killing floors for Mobiks, Chechnyans, and falsely arrested poor East and Central Asian brown prisoners. Bakhmut area. Ukraine continues to hold initiative according to Ukraine's command. Heavy fighting at the M-04 shows a back and forth for a few hundred feet of ground. Oskol border front. Ukraine has not shown any changes on this map in a number of days. However today heavy fighting has been verbally reported outside Kupiansk's repeated counterattacks by both sides again exchanging 100 meters multiple times. No further reports on any Russian attacks at Torsk village. Northern border. Shelling has increased by both sides on the northern border. Wagner equipment columns moving north in the last three days were confirmed to have moved in majority into Belarus. As noted before, Russia recently claimed that it has completed one of its normal spring conscription efforts with nearly 150,000 troops called into Belgorod. Black Sea. Russia is currently floating 11 warships capable of creating a volley of 12 caliber missiles. Early this morning around sunrise in Sevastopol the Ukrainian military made an attack using drones against the naval facilities of the Russian fleets. The Kremlin is reporting all drones were destroyed, however firing and explosions were reported ongoing for an hour. As this area is behind enemy lines information in the public sphere may be limited, so goals and successes of the Ukrainians is unclear. Explosions were reported in Bejansk and Mariupol. Ukraine world related. In an unexpected attempt to flex, the Hindustan Times is bragging that Elon Musk's donated Starlinks were destroyed at Hassan. Tomorrow marks nine years since the shootdown of Malaysia Airlines flight MH17. Putin has sent a great insult to the French as he seized ownership of Danone yogurt to go with his bannons. Prigozhin is suggesting the GRU is a public body being seized by private interests. The GRU appears to be attempting to play General Toplinsky as a man favored by his troops by releasing audio of a supposed anonymous airborne soldier threatening mutiny if the general is dismissed. We suppose it's almost time for another VDV drop. On the topic of dropping, snow is now less than four months away. The US has again confirmed that there is no conflict in anyone on Earth training Ukrainian pilots on the F-16. We aim to bring more. Like and subscribe.